Today I figured I would take a break from the serious science and show you guys how to make kinetic sand. Now unlike most of my projects, this is something that any of you can easily do at home. You don't even need gloves, I just wear them out of habit anytime I'm doing anything in the laboratory. All you actually need for this process is sand, oil, and cornstarch. I'm using laboratory grade acid wash sand, but that's only because it's what I had on hand and this is totally unnecessary. The best source of sand is probably Dollar Tree or Walmart, somewhere that sells play sand. For starch I used cornstarch and for oil I used canola oil. Now while I posted the exact volumes I used for this, the volume you use really doesn't matter. What matters is the ratio between the three ingredients. You're going to want to use five parts sand, three parts starch, and one part oil. As long as you maintain that proportion and thoroughly mix the starch in with the sand before the addition of the oil, you're going to end up with a high quality product. Now that's actually all there is for the kinetic sand itself. Um, it can be used as is for, you know, kids, sensory play, whatever other kind of play you might be into but I think it might be fun to try to add some color to it, so I'm gonna do that next. You'll also have to excuse me for not making anything interesting during this video out of the kinetic sand. Um, I would have loved this as a kid, but uh, as I am now, I can't really think of anything fun to make out of it. In any case, my first idea for coloring the kinetic sand was to add a small amount of diphenyl oxalate to two test tubes along with a small amount of fluorescent coloring. Once a small amount of hydrogen peroxide is added, the diphenyl oxalate will begin to fluoresce, and this is pretty similar to the reaction that goes on inside of glow sticks. My idea was that I could make some fun glow-in-the-dark kinetic sand. However, this didn't work, and you'll see why soon. As you can see, when I mix the diphenyl oxalate into the kinetic sand, the luminescence immediately disappears. Now I have no idea why this happened, I don't know if it's an oxidation problem or something chemically is happening to the diphenyl oxalate, but either way it didn't work and I begrudgingly settle on using plain old food coloring to color my kinetic sand. And that's pretty much all there is to this process. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, consider following uh, if you'd like to see more science or fun projects like this. Consider giving me a follow on YouTube or becoming a patron, whatever you feel is right. And uh, I am still working on several serious projects that'll trickle through over the next several days and weeks, so stay tuned for those. And as always, thank you so much for watching.